what is an ocean engineer? Now, I can tell by the hands that you guys already have answers to this question, right? Well, you also have Sharpie markers and post-it notes on your table. What I want you to do is take a few minutes and write down what you think an ocean engineer is. Every new idea, use a new post-it. We're trying to see what you know before we get started. Submersible is? Thank you. Ocean you want to be an ocean engineer? <laughs> Who wants to share their first idea on what an ocean engineer is? Harper. They study the ocean. They study the ocean. Is that correct? Now, if everyone does this when they know what, or they agree with what was said, and so Harper's absolutely correct. Come on up here, Harper, put your post-it note up here. Very good. All right, Chase. Um, they create boats and uh, submarines. Do they really? A lot. Fantastic. Go ahead and put them up there. Good job. Yes? They help us understand things about the ocean. Okay, so by studying the ocean, they can pass on that knowledge and help us understand. I agree with you completely. Put it up there. Okay, so we're just kind of briefly talking about what we know about it. And you guys actually know quite a bit. Give yourselves a round of applause. Nice work. All right, so we're going to read this story. Despina makes a splash. All right? Just by the title, does anybody have a guess or hypothesis what this is about? Harper? Like, um, the girl, like, goes in the water. The girl goes in, what? What makes you think of water? Because it said a splash. A splash, right? Hopefully she's not jumping into jello, right? Because that, that, that makes more of a, not really a splash. Okay, very good. All right, so we can just infer from the title that it has something to do with water and Despina. Have you heard of a name like Despina before? You have? No. Oh, good. There we go. The reason why we might not have heard this name is because she comes from Greece. All right, guys, so, so here we are in Florida, right? And Florida is a peninsula. Sarah. Why do we call it a peninsula? What makes a peninsula a peninsula? If you don't know, ask a friend. It's a, pe it's a piece of land that's mostly surrounded by water. It's uh -huh. still connected. Do you see where she lives? Santorini, she lives on an island. What's the difference between an island and a peninsula? Yes? An island is surrounded by water. Aha, and Florida is not. Right? We're surrounded three sides by water. There we go. So we're near the ocean. So that means we should know a lot about the ocean. Get your pens ready. Get out your post-it notes. And I want you guys to write what you know. Remember, every new idea gets a new post-it. If you need other post-its, raise your hand and I'll give you some more. When you have your idea, we're going to put all the original ideas up there. Okay? So when you have an idea and it's ready to go up, Taylor's already ready. How are you already ready? What do you have? Animals live there. Animals live there. Put it up. Fantastic work. Yes, what do you have? The ocean is salt water. Is salt water. Great. Fantastic work. Go ahead and put it up there. Yes, Natalie. Coral. Coral is there. There's coral in the ocean. Fantastic. Yes. There's seaweed. Seaweed. Plants. Very good. So we already have right here a lot of stuff about what we know about the ocean. We know that the ocean is salt water, that there's animals that live there. We know that there's volcanoes in the ocean. That's pretty awesome. Uh, there's shells in the ocean. So we can see we already know quite a bit about the ocean without being ocean engineers, but we want to take it a little bit further. This is Despina. And does anybody want to take a guess just by the picture what she's doing? What's she doing? She's trying to get some goggles. She's trying to reach Christine, Chris Anthony's goggles. Now, if you had to do this, if you guys had any, would you have any ideas on how to get the goggles? What would you try? Yes. Um, there's like, I would try, there's like an anchor to the boat and you could like reach out with the anchor. Awesome. So using what you have, thinking truly like an engineer, the materials you have on hand. Now, of course, we see Despina is in a wheelchair. Does that surprise anybody? Uh, Taylor, uh, were you surprised by that? Kind of, because um, I haven't really seen anybody in wheelchairs before. You haven't really seen too many people in wheelchairs before, right? Okay, right. And so it is kind of difficult if you're in a wheelchair to get around because a lot of things that we engineer aren't necessarily made for people in wheelchairs. And she lives in Greece. So the landscape of Greece is very hilly and bumpy, so it's kind of hard for her to get around. But she doesn't let her stop her. If you saw her, she's one of the most amazing swimmers out there. So she's swimming around and doing all the things. Normal things that we do is just that when she's on land, she uses a wheelchair to help her get around. There we go. So she's thinking about everything that happened the other day. The goggles are still in the ocean, right? She still needs to solve this problem. Also, she found that tool that was, belongs to the ocean engineer. She wants to figure out what that is. There we go. So what is this? It's you know, submersible. Say it again. It's a submersible. Say it loud. Submersible. Say it proud. Submersible. Everybody. Submersible. There we go. It's a submersible. And look, it's not just one part or one technology. Look at all the different technologies. Miles, what does that say? 
I'm not so sorry. Lights, camera, sample box, right? And all of these different things are here. Now we have to ask the question, we have foam for flotation. Why do you think that's important, foam for flotation? Yes? Because if they lose it, people wouldn't be able to find it because it would sink. It would sink. So without the flotation, it would sink. Yes? Since there's a tether on it and the boat would practically be moving most of the time, if they didn't have a foam for flotation, it would just drag against the bottom of the sea. Nice, like an anchor, right? So, there's, so we need the foam for flotation. And I love that you said tether, because if you look right here, it says tether to the boat. There we go. Now, also when we talk about the foam for flotation, we talk about a word called density. Everyone say density. Density. Who knows what density is? What is density? Density is like how much things you put into a space. How much things you put into a space? Well, that's good, exactly. The amount of stuff inside a space. So here, Nicholas is talking to the girls about a lunchbox. He's trying to explain density. But let me read this part right here, real quick. Density is a word we use to talk about how packed something is, Nicholas said. If there's a lot of stuff or matter packed into a certain space, we say that it's dense or has high density. I'm not sure I get it, I said. Hmm. Nicholas paused for a moment. Everyone say, Hmm. So take a look at these two coolers over here. So we have this one which is filled with tons of juicy tomatoes. And we have this one which is a bunch of pieces were eaten out of it. Then after we've eaten a bunch of them, it's loosely packed. The cooler is less dense. So how would you describe density to someone who has never heard the word? How would you describe it? What do you got? I describe it as like, um, if you had a basket, and if you were picking strawberries, and if you ate, um, uh, if you ate most of the strawberries, then it would, it, ha it would be less dense. Nice. I like the strawberry analogy compared to the tomato analogy. Who wants to read the definition? Go ahead, Cameron. The word used to describe how packed something is, an object's density depends on both its mass and its volume. So we already said mass. Everyone say mass. Mass. That's the amount of stuff inside the object. Everyone say, volume. volume! Now when I say volume, I want you to take up as much space as possible without knocking out your friends, okay? So everybody, volume! volume. So the volume is how much space you're taking up. Everyone say, mass. mass! Mass is the amount of stuff that you have inside, okay? So real quickly, mass! Volume! volume. volume. Mass! Volume. volume! Fantastic. All right, very good. So with, you cannot have density without having both mass and volume. I have an idea, Nicholas said. I know you can come up with the design all on your own, but I do have a tool that I use at work that might help you. It's called the engineering design process. Okay, guys, so here we go. So let's sum up lesson one. Everyone say lesson one. Lesson one. So in lesson one, there's a reason why we talked about this story. There's a reason why the story was written. And can I tell me what the whole point is overall of this story? Sarah. Um, they made a submersible. They made a submersible. That's exactly right. It introduced us to the idea of submersibles. Very good, Sarah. What else was another key point? And also, um, it showed us um, how the ocean engineers work and what they do. Good, good. concept there is that ocean engineers were introdu introduced to too. We learned a lot about different engineers. All right, so that is the end of lesson one. Everyone say lesson one. Lesson one. Ocean engineers. Ocean engineers. Submersibles. Submersibles. Density. Density. I am Glenn Whiteman. I'm the steam coach at the Village School in Naples, Florida. The story is really important. Even though it takes a lot of time, include the story. Fit it in in your reading time. Fit it in there because it's important to the rest of the unit. Gives them a character that they can relate to. Um, also, the geography is good, you know, so they can kind of get an idea of where these people are located in the world. But also, too, the problems that they come up with and that they are meeting engineers. So it shows a real-world situation of how it's going to uh, apply and why it applies to our lesson.